Hello, welcome to another How to Code Well web chat. My name is Peter Fisher, and in today's web chat, we're going to talk about my top five reasons why I think Docker is a good thing to learn, a good tool for web developers. So, why you should learn Docker if you're a web developer, if you haven't done so already. So, the first reason is portability. And by portability, I mean that you can create your image, you can create your Docker file, and you can create, you can configure your image and port that to different devices, different machines, different hosts. You can share that as well to the different teammates. And in doing so, you're ensuring that the environment that you're, uh, you're using is exactly the same as what you know the image is. So the infrastructure is the same, which is great because um, you, you, uh, you ensure that, um, that the versions of things are the same. So you have less risk of saying, well, it works on my machine. Um, and I don't know why it doesn't work on that machine. For example, MySQL, you could be writing a query in MySQL on your development machine, um, in your development environment, you could be running a different version of MySQL. So you could be using different keywords and so forth, um, different requirements and of, on, of MySQL. Um, and then you, when you go and push it up to the testing server, it could just fall down because the version of MySQL on that testing box is different. Um, and you'll only find that out once you've pushed that up, uh, unless you've done your, your background research on the, the versions and so forth. So, uh, so that's, that's great because you can, you can have a, a series of infrastructure that you can uh, move um, quite easily to different environments and ensure that those environments will be working because they're, they're, they're set up in the, the same manner as what you've developed on. And also with uh, sharing it to the team, you can ensure that the team are still are working on the same setup. For example, you could have a guy working on a, a MacBook, you could have someone working on a Windows machine, you could have someone working on a Linux machine with different versions and different configuration. And they could be hitting completely different problems that you are because they have got a different infrastructure set up. Um, and and those, those issues that they could be hitting could be completely pointless because the versions that they're working on are totally different from the version that's on that they're actually going to be deploying it to, okay? So uh, by having Docker images and sharing them to the team as well as moving them to the uh, different environments that you're working on basically ensures that, it, that you're aware of, of how the system's configured and everything is configured exactly the same, um, which is which is great. The second reason, uh, which follows on from portability, is reusability. And by reusing uh, an image, you can ensure that um, uh, that each project that you're working on is configured in the same way, a bit like the portability side. But with uh, Docker, you can um, create images in a sort of a generic manner and you can inject configuration and environment variables into your images uh, that basically set the image up. So for example, using an example of Apache as a web server, for example, you could have a very generic um, virtual host environment and you could set certain flags, certain switches um, that do different things. So for example, you could have an environment variable of the doc root, the, the document root, um, and you can inject that in to the, the Docker image using, say, a Docker Compose environment environment variable or just doing it through Docker Run. And in doing so, uh, you're, you're able to have this sort of base image that you can use for different projects that require Apache. And you can, you can configure the, the, the server, the infrastructure, just by using the, the Docker Compose YAML files. Uh, which is really handy. Um, and also you can create base images that you can extend from. So uh, if you have a lot of infrastructure, you can create a base image that say um, that all the other Docker uh, images extend from. So you would use the, the from statement um, at the top of the Docker file to ensure that all the infrastructure extends and is using the base image. And that base image can have a specific uh, uh, version of say uh, Debian. Uh, it could have a specific setup of say firewalls and IP tables. Um, different users could be configured at that point and so forth. And by having different Docker images that extend off of that base image, you're ensuring that those, those uh, 
options, those uh, those applications get added to and config gets added to the other infrastructure. Excuse me. So um, so that's reusability. Reusability is key for uh, Docker. The third is having a better understanding and um, a more of an appreciation of the technology that you're you need to use for your project. And I found this uh, when I was moving from Windows to Linux, because um, in Windows, for example, you you're in this sort of GUI environment, this lovely com comfortable environment, and a lot of things are done for you in the background, and you you you're not aware of where things live. Um, or you're less aware of where things live. Uh, for web development, for example, you, you have things like WAMP, which is like the Windows, Apache, MySQL, PHP stack. And uh, you can just configure that and everything's done, but you don't actually know where those things actually live. So, you know, like um, where the apl actual application lives, you don't know where the logging files are and from, from the off and uh, the configuration obviously WAMP gives you the tools to to change the configuration and the php ini and so forth um, but where those files are and live you don't necessarily need to worry about them from the off uh, so moving to linux you you needed to have an appreciation of the file system and how that is structured um, so where you know etc apache 2 lives and where the log files live for that and for MySQL, where does the my.conf live, and all of those kind of things that, that, that those sort of um, the, the configuration, uh, where those configuration files actually live, you need to become aware of that. So you had a, a better um, appreciation of how a how just a computer is created, and it's the same thing with um, with Docker and setting up the infrastructure via Docker because you're actually creating these uh, these applications, you're creating these containers, you're creating these environments. And so you need to understand how these environments work. So where the logging files are, where the config are, uh, what you need to, to, to do to the config, what permissions are required and so forth. It may, makes you more of a, have a, a well-rounded understanding of the, 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 the infrastructure that is being used. It's not, oh, I'm just going to install WAMP and, and there you go. Um, or, or MAMP if you're on, on Mac. So a better understanding of the infrastructure and the technology that is used. Um, second, or well, no, not second, sorry, we're on number four now, uh, backups. Backups um, is, is great with Docker because you can uh, create different mount points at certain, certain, um, uh, certain file system entry points, for example, um, in the container and you can create volumes that are both live on the host machine and also um, just volume volumized containers um, perhaps where the config and the logs and or, or all the other bits and pieces all the data is stored um, and you can have as many of those mount points as you want and you can uh, copy those and detach those mount points and put them on other containers which is great because you can have, um, like for example, Jenkins, for instance, has a, 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 a Jenkins home directory, right? And in that Jenkins home directory, you can, or you can, you can um, use that as a mount point, and then you can detach that mount point and move it to another Jenkins master, um, which is great because you don't have to install another version of Jenkins. You can just, you know, if you've got, you, you just run the docker build and then you just attach um, you just attach the the, the the home directory again it's quite difficult to explain I think it's one of those things that uh, you just need to ju just try out and do but um, really once you, you once you start writing some backup scripts around the volumized parts of, of, of docker it you can you can quickly see how uh, how backups uh, are, work really well with docker um, so you can sort of, um, I, guess, I guess really it's because the, the, the volume and the container is actually decoupled. So you're, you move your thinking from, okay, well, the files are actually in the container. Well, they're not. The files are mounted to the container. They're, they're actually, you know, you, you, can, you can remove that mount point and put it somewhere else and you can put that on another container. Um, you can have a container just f 
for your data. Uh, so you can have a volume container and so forth, which is great. Um, I, I mean, I, it, it's great for websites because you can create your own sort of uh, site directory and then you, that is a volume that you connect to Apache. Uh, so the data, yes, it's in the container, but you are actually working on it on your host machine uh, in, in sort of a site folder and that site folder is mounted to the container. It's, it's a, it's a, do try it. It's, um, with backups, it's great. So the last thing, and this, this is quite a difficult list because there's so much of Docker that, that is um, very useful for web development. The last thing is isolation. And uh, so this isn't the last, this isn't like, um, this isn't, Oh, the, this isn't like the fifth reason and the last reason, the smallest point. This is actually quite a large point. Isolation. Isolation with web development is very important, especially in um, so shared hosting. So, for example, if you've got uh, a lot of projects that are on shared hosting and uh, one of those projects requires a different version. of, I'm going to use MySQL again. Um, and you're worried that you're, you you go and upgrade the server, but you've gone and obviously changed the version for every other website. Um, with isolation, with the with the Docker images, everything is isolated to that to that uh, image, to that thing. And the way I work is I create a Docker machine for every project. So every Docker machine has a, a series of containers, and it's isolated to that to that uh, Docker machine. Um, even if I get a client who uh, wants wants a project on a on a, a hosting thing that doesn't have Docker, I will still develop it using um, Docker in my uh, local environment. And the reason why I do that is because I don't want to infect any other project that I've got uh, with a different version of something. Um, so. You know, it could be it could be a legacy project that requires a legacy version of PHP or MySQL or NPM, and and therefore you need to downgrade everything. Well, if you're if you haven't Dockerized your environments and say you've got you know five or six or eight or nine or ten or twelve projects on your local environment, you've gone infected all of those with those with that version if you haven't Dockerized them. Um, so isolation is very, very important, very important um, with Docker. And it's, it's, it's a good reason for web developers to learn Docker um, and, and, and stuff. So I've actually got a series of tutorials on uh, both Docker machine and uh, Docker itself, Docker containers and images and how to create the images and how to create containers uh, and or how to pull images and how to create containers. The Docker machine tutorials is how to install Docker machine and how to create machines and, and, and so forth and manipulate those machines. Do check those out. I do, um, I do recommend that web developers, if they haven't so already, should, um, should make a quick New Year's resolution and learn Docker. And do check out those videos. If you've got any comments, if you've got any questions, then as always, uh, I appreciate those. Put those down in the comment section below. Share this video to anyone who you think might find it helpful and uh, give it a, lump, a thumbs up uh, if, uh, if it's helped you at all. Um, once again, my name is Peter Fisher. Thank you ever so much for watching and I shall see you again soon. Thanks.